Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to show you how to configure API throttling on your HTTP API gateway endpoint. This is going to help prevent too many users from calling your API at once and overwhelming your system. Now before we get started, I just want to remind you that there are two different API gateway types, HTTP and REST. I'll be using an HTTP API in this video, but if you want to learn about the difference between these two types, I'll put a video down below in the description section where I talked all about this so you can get all caught up. Keep in mind that the process for creating the REST API is a little bit different, uh, so you may not be able to use this exact process in order to set that up for the REST API. So here we are in the API Gateway console. You can see I already have a HTTP API set up. This one is called Persons. You can see it is indeed an HTTP API protocol. Um, now I did make a video on how to set all this up, which I will also put in the description section uh, so you can get to the same starting point as me. But I just want to kind of walk you through this API first just to show you what we're dealing with. Uh, so clicking on this API, we can see, you know, here are the details for it. Uh, we can see we have two different stages. The first one is default. The other one is test. Uh, it's always good to have different stages for different environments. I'm just going to copy this guy to my clipboard and just show you that uh, this is working in a moment. But I want to first go to the route section under the develop tab over on the left and just to show you the two different routes that we have configured. So we have two different routes, the create person, which is a post and get person, which is a get. And these two APIs are backed by a Lambda function. So the Lambda function is going to be returning data for us. Um, now, before we proceed to the throttling step, I just want to show you that this API is working. Uh, so I'm just going to paste in that um, endpoint there for my test environment. And then we're just going to put get person on the end. And, right. So you can see here that we got the correct input. We got back the person ID one, two, three from our Lambda function, which is serving this response back. OK, so this is perfect. This is working as intended. Let's go back to our API gateway and set up the throttling limit. Now, in order to do that, what we need to do is in the left hand section here, this left hand menu under the protect section, uh, we're going to go to the throttling section and throttling is going to ask you if this is your first time here to select the stage that you want to use. And we are going to use test. And this is the main screen for setting up initial throttling. OK, so there's a couple things going on here. So let me quickly explain what's happening. Now, you can see on the left hand side, there's route settings on stage. So uh, what you can do, like, you know, how I had those two routes, get person and create person. You can set up different limits for both of those different routes. So if you want different numbers for each of them, um, you can only do that for whatever reason through the AWS CLI or SDK. Like you can see up here, use the CLI or SDK to create the custom route settings. I don't know why you can't do this through the console yet, but um, for whatever reason, you have to use the CLI, which I'll show you how to do in a moment. Now, alternatively, if you don't want to specify uh, the settings for each route, you can use default route throttling over here. And you can see this throttling limit applies to each route in the stage, except those defined for specific routes. So this is going to apply, um, like you would imagine, for all routes that where you do not specify the specific routes limits. So if you went through the, the effort of creating a rule here for a specific API, this would be prioritized. So the, the setting that you use over here would uh, supersede what you use for defaults. Now, something else you should know about is that there's also account level throttling. Now, account level throttling is generally just to protect you uh, as a user. But if you have a whole bunch of different APIs in your account and a whole bunch of different routes, then you may need to adjust these settings. I believe these are configurable if you you just request a support ticket uh, from AWS and you can just get these bumped up. Now, before we move further, there is two important concepts that you need to know about when you're configuring throttling on your API gateway endpoints. Now, before we explain these concepts, I want you to remember that we are configuring per second throttling, right? Request per second is the unit that we are configuring here. So when we say 200, we're really referring to 200 requests per second. When we say 1000 here, we're referring to 1000 requests per second. Now, the way the token bucket algorithm works is um, it's literally like a bucket. You can visualize a empty bucket. OK, and the size of the bucket is the capacity for your concurrency. So if you have a really, really small bucket, then you'd have very, very low amount of requests uh, that can come in at a particular moment in time, a particular second. Right. And if you have a very, very large bucket, it's the complete opposite. So you can absorb a lot of requests at a particular moment in time. 
That's what the burst limit corresponds to. It is the size of the bucket, okay? So the general idea is the bigger the burst limit, the more concurrent requests per second you will support, and the lower the limit, the lower concurrent requests that you can support per second. All right, so that's just the size of the bucket, but what about refilling the bucket? How do we put more you know, capacity or put more requests into the bucket itself? Now that's the rate limit. The rate limit is sometimes also called sustain, but it's basically the refresh rate. So if you had a hose that you're trying to fill uh, water into, into this bucket, if you have a really high rate limit, imagine that you have a really thick hose. So it's kind of like a firefighter hose. It'll fill that bucket up in no time at all. But if you have a, a very small, you know, sink hose or something um, that's from your home, it may take a little while to fill up that bucket. So the rate is the amount of kind of a regeneration of uh, concurrent units that get put back into the bucket. Now I have a whole video on this topic where I explain a lot about this in more detail. All right, so that's enough for burst and rates here in token bucket algorithms. Let's actually demonstrate some of this in action. So um, first of all, I wanna just demonstrate, we have some very high numbers here already by default, 200 and 1000. So I'm just gonna go to my uh, tab over here and I'm just gonna smash my F5 button. I'm just refreshing the page over and over and over again. You can see this is working every single time. And every single time it does this, it's invoking my Lambda function, right? Now let's go and adjust these numbers really quick. Let's say uh, we want to edit our default route throttling. We're gonna set our burst to be one and our sustain to be one, right? So you can also have these to be the same number. So very, very low limits. We have a burst of one TPS and a sustain of one uh, TPS as well. I'm gonna click on save now. I'm gonna go back to my invoke endpoint and I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm smashing my button and you can see there something happened there, too many requests. Let me see if I can stop here on it. Oh, oh. Oh, there we go. So too many requests. Uh, so you can see here it is indeed working and this is the type of exception that you can expect to get back. Okay, too many requests. All right, so that's that in action. Now what I wanna do is I wanna show you how to create a route specific um, rule. So let's go to our terminal now and I want to show you a specific command that you can use to do that. Remember, you're, you're not allowed for whatever reason to do this through the console itself, at least as of today. Uh, so I already have this command pre-populated through the CLI. Uh, and it's right here in front of us. So it's AWS API Gateway V2, and we're using the update stage command. You need to give it your API ID, which is what I have over here. Uh, so ours is PRG8, blah, blah, blah. And there it is, PRG8, blah, blah, blah. Then we need to pass it the stage name, which is test. Then we need to give it route settings. And it's kind of like a bizarre uh, JSON type input. So you need to, uh, I'll just expand this a little bit so maybe you can see better, yeah. Um, so we have in quotes, uh, get, which is the type of the API. Remember that get person is a getter. So we need to say, you know, what type this is, what the name of the route is. And then we need to say throttling burst limit. You can set this to whatever number you want. And then throttling rate limit. You can set this to whatever number you want. So let's just, uh, adjust this really quick. I'm going to put five and five in really quick. And, and then we're just gonna run this guy and make sure it works. Yep, so we can see uh, successfully deployed stage with deployment ID, yada, yada, yada. And now if we go back to our tab, uh, actually, let's go back to the console, refresh the page. We should see something here now. Yeah, so for get person, we see we have a burst of five and a rate of five. And um, this, this rule should take priority over our default route throttling. So if I go back to my tab now, what should be respected is the 5-5 five, five rule. I don't expect I'll be able to hit that if I'm just smashing my button here. So yeah, you can see I'm not, oh, there we go. So we had one, but generally um, it's gonna be hard to, to catch up to five transactions per second. Yeah, so um, you can see here that it is indeed working. All right, so that's it for this video. I will put links to other videos, which I think are helpful down below and on the right-hand side here. Uh, so, and if you like this video, please don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks so much, and I'll see you next time.